Hello there, welcome back to Football Adania, a new season, a new Dutch Eredivisie season upon us, the 2022-23 season. And um, I'm Michael Statham, I'm joined by Mike Bell. How are you, Mike? We haven't got your picture today, for those that are watching on YouTube, but um, you're here definitely in spirit and your, your voice. Yeah, I'm, I'm here to talk about the, the new season. We're battling through some Wi-Fi issues to to talk about this new Eredivisie season because, you know, it's upon us only... Oh, we've got the the season opener this weekend and then it's a week to go and I think it's going to be a, another exciting season uh, given what's what's happened over the summer. I think that we've got a lot to talk about. Yep, so we'll be talking about every single team in the league, um, whether they're at the top or the bottom of the league. We'll start at the top and kind of work our way down, but we'll see how we go. Mike and I have both got our predictions of the table. We'll be sharing those on screen. So if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see those. You're on SoundCloud or iTunes, we'll talk about them. But do you know that you can also go to YouTube and we'll be showing a few things on screen throughout, um, sort of back up our points. It is a little bit earlier. I'm actually in a season preview podcast, I think for the first time with you, Mike, in July. Um, it's right at the end of the month because the season's starting so early for the World Cup. Um, yeah, I, th- I don't think there's, there's, there's much else to happen, though, between now and, say, the end of the transfer window. Um, a lot of teams have made their deals. There might still be a few more to go, especially loan deals. Uh, but let's begin at the top, shall we? Is it going to be Ajax, PSV or Feyenoord, Mike? It's going to be one of those three, isn't it? So who do you think is going to win the league? I think, you know, last year we were looking like it was going to be tight at the top for a wee bit. I think this year is going to be definitely uh, even tighter race than it was last year. I think PSV are, have done some decent deals. I think Feyenoord are, are strengthening their squad now and they've still got some players to come in the next couple of couple of days or, or weeks to target a few more and I think Ajax have been very active in the transfer window as well and have made some some great deals such as Bergvine and I'm excited to see what Bassi yeah. some of those deals that they've made yeah I'm excited to see what, what Vindal and, and Bassi can do there and there seems to be another couple of players coming in as well an Italian striker and you know they're looking at a right back as well so I think it's going to be a very Tight race at the top, you know, Ajax, is, you know, his face is there and have not lost Anthony yet. And they've kept hold of a few players, same with PSV, you know, you, you're thinking that they would maybe lose Gakpo and, and Sangari, but right at the moment, they've not. And, you know, that could change after the Champions League qualifiers. But at the moment, if these are the squads that I'm going with, you know, it's going to be tight at the top. But part of me thinks to Ajax with Bergwijn, Weindahl, I think they're they're going to be the ones to beat. And I think that they will just edge it come the end of the season. It was two points in the end of last season, wasn't it? So that said how close it was between Ajax and PSV. The thing that struck me, first of all, I'll just put up the PSV transfers on screen before I talk about Ajax. But PSV have made some great signings to, to close that gap for me of the quality, um, the, the, the difference that there was. Obviously, Roger Schmidt has left the club. We've now got Ruben Nusteroy as a manager. He's an unknown quantity, isn't he? He was the under-19s coach last season. The hierarchy obviously really liked him, so he's now the head coach. And he's made some, some good signings. It may not be him that's made those signings, but he's got to try and coach them. Luke de Jong coming back to the club. Um, 31-year-old striker now, but he was captain of the club. He's come back to be captain. He will definitely add goals. Though I did watch one pre-season game and he missed quite a few easy chances. But I think he's going to score more than he's, he, he'll miss. You've got Hustil coming in. Javi Simons, um, Walter Benitez is a free transfer, a goalkeeper from Nice. And that that could, could be a, a massive part for me why I think PSV got a fantastic opportunity to win this title for the first time in, in, in a number of years. Um, and yet some other signings around the edges of that. Will Savio be any good? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, Kiana Herver coming from, coming from Wolves on loan to be the new right back. I think they've had a pretty impressive summer. And that... That, for me, was why, for a good time this summer, I thought it's going to be PSV's year. And, and it still might be. The, the league, of course, is not won in, in July. But I don't I don't see how they've done quite enough to close the gap to Ajax. I think that happened just before we started recording this podcast, is that Nani Madueke, their winger, he's out injured until November now. So if he's out for a bit, we've got um, Cody Capo potentially leaving the club. Then... It, it persuades me that PSV won't win the title, though with Hapo, De Jong scoring goals, um, Savio may well be a good player. They've got ammunition, and in defence, having Benitez as the new goalkeeper, that, that is why people will, will 
be swayed towards PSV, but they're still not the favourites. I'll just pull up Ajax's um, transfers on screen here. I, I just want to add, by the fact we haven't even mentioned Mario Gertz, is that I don't know, think that PSV are going to miss him all that much, um, despite him being a good player for them. They could, uh, they'll definitely move on. Ajax's transfers, Stephen Berkvine, Calvin Bassey, Brian Brobby, Owen Vindal, massive signings for them. And what a transfer outlay as well. With that money they spent, they've actually spent the money that they received from the outgoing transfers of Martinez, Allaire, Kavenberg, Tagio Fico. And I don't think they're in exactly like a weaker position because of that, though there are still question marks on how good Bassi will be as a Martinez replacement. And also the first choice goalkeeper, which to begin the season is going to be Jay Horta, the young goalkeeper. Has he got the potential? We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on that, Mike? And I, I, by the way, I, I like you, I, I do think it will be Ajax that will win the league this season. If anyone watching disagrees with us or agrees with us, let us know in the comments below. Are you Ajax, PSV or somebody else this season? We will touch upon all the teams shortly. Um, but Mike, yeah, what, what do you think? Is it going to be uh, a super tight one again and um, PSV taking Ajax all the way? Yeah, I think so. And you can't rule out Feyenoord as well with the deals they're doing. But I think with PSV at the moment, you know, we can say that, oh, if, as I said, if the squads would stay the same, then I think it'd be tighter. But because PSV don't know right now if Hakpo is going to stay, it really depends on whether they can can get through the Champions League qualifiers or not. If they can offer him Champions League football, then he's not going to, not going to go. But if they get knocked out by Monaco, Arsenal come calling with 30... 30 million bids, then you know, it's going to be difficult for him to, to keep him. And then if he goes, they've not got Madueke, then who did they bring in? You know, you've got Savio and you've got the youngster, Bakayoko, and you've got Simmons in there who can play on the wing as well. But are they going to be enough to, to replace Gakpo? And, and, you know, what if they get an offer for Sangare as well from a Premier League club? These could be big deals that come in in August that really, really hit them. But I do think that PSV have strengthened their, their weakest position from last year, and that was in goal. I think, you know, Drama we're not relying on him anymore. They've brought in Walter Benitez, who looks like a, a fantastic signing, probably their most important signing of the summer. And if he can play well, the defence, if they can get Buscagli back, Romalho as well, then they look tight in defence. And it just depends on if they can, can keep what they've got up front. So if they can keep that, then they have every chance. Um, but yeah, I just think Ajax have that, that strength and depth. And I don't think they're done in the transfer market. I think they're still going to bring in players. I think they, they'll they probably lose a pair of scores as well. And they're looking to bring in another couple of defenders, uh, a backup striker, and who knows, maybe even an armed midfielder. So I don't think they're done in the transfer market by any way. And that could be a bit ominous for the other clubs if they keep spending money. Now, my and your my table people. predictions are very similar. It might be that case of great minds think alike. We're both quite nerdy about the Eredivisie. We might have a good idea where they're going to finish, but as always, there's going to be, there are going to be surprises. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if Pierce were in the league. I also would be surprised if final come out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, with, with Ajax, that they've got Alfred Schroeder coming in as, as the head coach now instead of Ericsson Haag. That was one of my big doubts in my mind. Schroeder hasn't really pulled up any trees in his managerial career so far. He didn't do so well at Twente, Hoffenheim in Germany. Um, and also winning the title with Club Bruges was was good, but six months in, in charge there was was all he has got kind of proven himself with, in my in my view. So he has a big point to prove with Ajax, but so does Van Nistelrooy, and it's those big games between the two, Ajax PSV and Feyenoord, which are going to make this title race tell. Last season it was PSV that lost out because they could never seem to be an Ajax or a Feyenoord. So because of that. They, they, didn't, they didn't win the title. And for me, that was partly what Schmidt's, Schmidt's doings um, that led to that. So who will come out of the top this time? That could play quite a pivotal role. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I think Ajax fans are quite mixed on, on Schroeder's arrival, but, you know, he got a lot of praise for, for being assistant during that run to the Champions League semi-final. You know, a lot of people thought he was a part of the mastermind behind that. But, you know, it, you do get instances where people are better number twos than they are number ones. So it could be a case that he is a better assistant than he is a head coach. So mm. you know, we'll see this year if he, he can do the job because, you know, it's, it's going to be big high expectations if they're spending money that they're going to go 
you know, win the league and sort of going to do well in the Champions League again. And whether they can do that under Bishara remains to be seen. But yeah, Van Nistelrooy is uh, it's an interesting one. Club legend, you know, a great, great player in his day. But is he is he a great head coach? You know, he did okay at, at Young PSV. Um, I don't think they really pulled up any trees, but he gave a lot of chances to youngsters, and I think that's what PSV he want. You know, these players that are coming through like Bakayoko, um, they've got a really exciting young midfielder coming through. I think his name's Sabari. Um, he looks really good in preseason, and you know, it's Davy Simmons. You know, it's, it's molding these players and getting them ready to become a real force in the next couple of years that the Van Nistelrooy will be be focused on. Yeah, it could be you now in the yeah, future, rather you know, than just you know, this season. And let's move on to final anyway. They 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 lost a number of key players throughout this summer. I'll just scroll down to them um, on screen. They they lost about five or six starting players. Sinistera's gone to Leeds. Malassi's gone to Man United. Two big players on that left hand side of theirs. Brian Linson's gone as well. Um, plus they've lost their loanies, which were Rhys Nelson, Till Dessers, Chus Till. So who's come in to replace them? Quentin Timbers coming for big money, hasn't he, from Utrecht? But they, they may well be getting that money from a sale of, of Frederick Arsnes, who may well be going to Benfica following Schmidt out of the Eredivisie. That hasn't been confirmed at this moment in time they're recording this podcast. Durrison's come in from Hertha Berlin. For me, there's a massive question mark on him. I don't know whether he's got that potential to, to fulfil what Sinistera has left that big hole. He's yet to prove himself at the age of 24, really, that he can do it week in, week out. Um, but the, the biggest bit of business has to be Simansky coming in from Dynamo Moscow. A lot of people have, have really bigged him up so far. He had a great first game in preseason with, against Nak Breda. And he, he seems like, like, almost like a complete picture in attack and midfield. But they're only going to have him for a little bit. But final will definitely be able to use him this season and he, he will be a weapon. A couple of the players came in as well. Um, some at Drisi, again, a winger like Dior Awesome. Hasn't done it for the past few years, has he? So it's, there's, there are question marks about the transfers they're making. A couple more are coming in as we speak. It's going to be Jacob Rasmussen, a centre-back that played with Vitesse last season. And also, um, oh, it's the radio now. Oh, Jimenez, that's it. The Mexican striker. You, they're just doing you know, quantities, aren't they? All these players coming in. Will they be able to suddenly gel together after quite a short time together this summer? That was why I, I didn't think they finished first or second, because Ajax and Pierce feel a lot more settled got a bit more quality. The final will be a very good team, I hope, in the Europa League in particular. Um, and they'll just fall short, short of those top two. But no doubt they'll win lots of games this season and Arna Slot will continue to be an amazing coach. What are your thoughts, Mike? Yeah, I thought that, you know, I saw the uh, a final fan page, I think it was, was quite top, put out uh, a projected lineup for for next season. And on paper, it does look like a good squad. You know, they've still got Kochu, they've still got Senezi, they've still got Bailo. They've got the players there, you know. Johan Bakash, you know, he's not done it so far, but, you know, he's, he's still a good, decent winger. And some of the players that they have brought in are are decent. You know, you've said about Szymanski. Idrissi, you know, he had a great season at AZ, but he hasn't done really anything since. And that loan to Ajax definitely didn't work out. So it'd be interesting to see him. I think Quinton Timber is an excellent signing. If he can, can move on from... From what he's been showing at Utrecht, and and he's a steal at seven million because his potential is a lot more than that. But yeah, it's up front. You know, Danilo can he do it at a club such as Feyenoord? Remains to be seen. And this Jimenez, you know, you know, Feyenoord fans seem quite excited by his arrival. But he's been playing for Cruz Azul. Um, I saw Football International describe him as the Mexican belt veghorse. So I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing at the moment. So, <laughs> but it's. As you say, it's unknown quantities. So he could turn out to be the next Graziano Pelle, or it could be be a flop. So you just don't you don't know. Um, but I have total faith in Arnold. So I think he's a great head coach. I think he can gel these players together. I'm excited to see more of of Tabuni because I think that I was crying out for him to get a chance at AZ last season. He was on the bench for I think nearly every single Eredivisie game. Um, he only made I think he only made one appearance or something like that. And he scored a couple of goals in pre-season. So I think that he's a player, if he can live up to his potential, I ask get, uh, sorry, find out getting him on a, a free transfer is, is, a, is a steal. Um, and I'm excited to see him. And the boy they've got from Excelsior, it's unlucky that he's got injured in pre-season. But 
my wife as well, I think he's got, got potential. So I think that this is a squad full of young talents and some experienced heads coming in. So I think that if Arna Swap can get them gelled, can get them playing well, then it could be an excellent season for Feyenoord and it could turn out to be a dark horse. But again, there's still a month to go in the transfer window. Can they keep hold of Sinesi if a, another centre-back comes in? Can they keep Kochu? As it seems like they are at the moment, remains to be seen. Um, but yeah, it's it's all about whether Arna Swap can get them get them playing well because uh, I, I totally agree with you with some of the players there's just big question marks around them and Del Rosan is one that he he came through with such high high hopes in Man City but when it's getting to the actual first team football professional football he's just not been able to to do the business and he's 24 now you know this is probably his last chance at you know a big a big club so if he can't can't bring the you know the 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 creativity that's left by, by Sinistera, then then he might be lacking a bit up front. But yeah, it's, it's, I think it's an exciting season for Feyenoord. I think they've got a lot to look forward to seeing if this team can reach the potential because if they can, then they will most certainly be closer to Ajax than, than PSV than they were last season anyway. Yeah, my doubt in my yeah, mind is that they'll have a slow start and because of that, they won't, they won't be able to win the league. There's a chance they might make second or something like that if one of Ajax or PSV also has a slow start. Um, though I think in Europe they, that's where they can really hit it because the team will gel and slot will work his magic. But Farnwood have also had a lot of poor wingers as well over the past uh, number of years since they, all, they went almost bankrupt. Um, I'm thinking about the Bastasi Coglu's um, didn't quite work out for him, did it? The, the Sebastian Larsons, who that's Sebastian Larson, sorry. Um, the, <laughs> other, the, other, the other one, the other Swedish winger they had. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get embarrassed in the comments now. But he was okay, wasn't he? But never really hit hit the heights. So I think I think those those wings that are coming could could be amazing, or they could just come off the bench every now and again, throw himself about, and not really do that much. I hope they they do well though, and finally have another great season. Mike, I'm going to put on my table predictions, and I'm going to put on yours. We will, of course, talk about every single team, but I just want to share with people that the highlights of both of our tables, and people can. If they're watching on YouTube, can sit there, stick their teeth into, sit their teeth into what what we've got planned them, um, and what we think will happen this season. So I'll just get at mine. I think the thing for me was Utrecht. I put them in fourth place. My predicted finishes this season because they have strengthened well. Hank Fraser as a coach, some ums and ahs about that. He's he's good, but not a great coach. But Bastos coming in as a striker, Dacian Redon, another one who who could, if he hits his potential, be a great um, be a great foil for for Bastos up top, uh, as well as Dumacas, another striker who's, who's been pretty good over the past year or so. So that ammunition was why I put them above RZ and Twenta. I think Twenta and RZ, if they're both in European football, that might be a bit of a distraction for them, um, and and see them also fall short of a challenge for the top three. I don't think there are going to be surprises for top three this season. I have to say, though, RZ did strengthen pretty well, and I'm sure we'll get into them shortly. Uh, and as for the rest of the table, well, I didn't think that Excelsior would 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 adapt well to the area of Brazil. They've lost Ty Stalinga, so I had to put them bottom. Um, I think AKC Volvic have yet to strengthen this transfer window properly, so I think they'll also struggle. Um, and Emmon, for me, will be the best promoted team. And a bit further at the table, I think the Tess will struggle this season and won't be in that, that top six bunch. Um, and I think Harold and Vane and Fortuna are sort of at the best of the rest. You've got Bert, Bert Ilmaz is coming as a striker for Fortuna. Um, and I mean, Seoul, I, mean, I think, will score the goals for Harold and Vane, which is why I put them so high at the table. What were your thoughts on that, Mike? I'll just pull up yours now. I think yours is quite similar, isn't it? Yeah, I think... Ours is, is very similar. There's only a few few clubs that are switched about. I think you're spot on with the, the bottom where Excelsior being the, the weakest of the bunch. You know, it always surprises when they come up how, how small a club it is, how small their stadium is. And, you know, they've divorced their, their main goal scorer from, from last season. So it's going to be difficult for them to, to replace that. You know, they've managed to get in you know, a few loans, you know, as Arkans come in and, you know, brought in Yasin Ayub on a, on a free, but I don't think it's going to be enough to to keep them in the division. Um, but, yeah, I think that at the top, you know, I've got Utrecht fourth as well. I think that it is an exciting season for them with the forward players that they've got. And, you know, they've still got a month to 
to spend some money because you know they've got that timber money burning in their pocket and they've got some wages from from Adam Meyer even so I think they'll be looking to bring in another couple of players and if they strengthen that midfield then they will be uh, a prospect you know we always said you check to Wayne's Cubs it's going to finish fourth and they never do but I think this year might be the year to do that and yeah, I think that because Twente and AZ haven't maybe strengthened in the way I would like to have seen them strengthen. Um, I've been vocal about what I thought of, of AZ last season. I think that they, they sold a lot of players and just didn't bother to, to invest the money, um, whether that was, was COVID-related or, or other. Um, they didn't replace the players that left and it was a, an up-and-down season for them. And I don't think they've really strengthened, in my eyes, as much as they could have to challenge the, the top three, which is what they, they were doing when they had the likes of Bordeaux, Stengs, Coop Miners in their, in their squad. So I've got them down in sixth because I think Twente just have, have a little something better and they have Ron Jans in there as well. I think they've made a couple of decent signings um, and I think they'll be be top five, top five definitely. And I agree with her and Vane have got enough goals to, to get into the playoffs. And Fortuna, for me, are the ones that are going to be a dark horse to watch. But Gyalmaz up front, they're going for, for some other players to strengthen. Um, I think it's going to be an exciting season for them. But yeah, I think I totally agree with you. Down, down the bottom, around mid-table, there's, there's a number of clubs that you could you could switch out their positions because it's going to be so tight again at the bottom. Because without mincing your words, there is a lot of, of average teams in there. Um, and anyone could really get dragged into the, the bottom three if they have a poor season. Totally agree. And maybe we're just people that watch the league far too much, or maybe we're both about to be extremely wrong. Maybe we're a bit of an echo chamber with each other. <laughs> we agree on a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> but let, let's begin with ours and Altmar, shall we? A team that people have tro- dropped in there with a top three and made a top four in the past few years. Ours and Altmar are a very good team. They're not the biggest team in the league. You'd say that FC20 are a little bigger. Um, but they, they have talent and they have actually strengthened this summer, but just not enough. It seems that the money they get, they don't they don't go for it enough. Like like we've seen with Ajax this summer, fine order now spending some money. But ours they're just they're just they're keeping it, keeping it, keeping it. Maybe they're reinvesting it into their youth team, or maybe the owners just sat on a pile of cash because they've sold a number of players for a high profit now, but haven't made enough with it. He ends our guards come in. He had a good a good season with Air K Save All Right last season. But I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't think that's enough. I think they need to get another, another goalkeeper in. They're rotating their second goalkeeper, Hobby Verhulst, with um, Vindar at the moment. Uh, that that's just papering over a crack. If they want to do well in Europe, if they want to challenge that top three, they need a class goalkeeper. Probably another defender. I'm not sure if this this Belgian fellow has come in, Van Housden. If I said his name right, I'm not sure how good he is. Maybe you can like me and that in a, in a moment, Mike. Kirk has, it looks a good young replacement for Vindal, but has a long way to go with his development to, to fully replace him. And they've lost Frederick Mitchell midfield. He's going to Galatasaray. So will Tijani Ryan just step up? Now he's 24 to be that regular midfielder. There are some question marks, but they have still got Pavlidis. Jesper Carlson has not left the club yet. There, there are still some, some goals in this team and there are still some very good footballers, especially in midfield. What are your overall thoughts on the mic? Do you, do you think they will dip into that transfer market again? Or, yeah, it was just another season of being a good team, but not a great team? I really hope they do strengthen with now a couple of signings. Um, because if they don't, then I think I'm, I'm right on my, my prediction. They're not going to finish top five. Because, you know, AZ fans seem to think that their, their squad's good enough at the moment. Um, I, I wholeheartedly disagree with that. And yeah, I think that they're the three, four players short of, of being a side that can, can challenge the top three because, you know, they've already played this, this season already. You know, they're in the Europa Conference League and they, they beat Tuzla City um, from Bosnia and Herzegovina 4-0 on aggregate. But when even if you looked at the bench for those games, you know, there wasn't a lot of strength and depth. There was a lot of youngsters on that bench. And yeah, you can say, yes, McCarlson's not back yet. Um, still question marks on whether he will will stay. You know, still a month yeah, ago at the transfer yeah, window, right. so he could he could depart. Um, and yeah, the goalkeeper situations, I don't think it's good enough. You know, you had Louis Van Gaal saying at the end of the season awards last year that Nikolai should have went to them because they needed a goalkeeper, 
and they haven't went out and signed one. Um, and yeah, you say that they've got a lot of talented youngsters, but a, a shocking report came out during the summer that, that I saw that out of all the clubs in the Eredivisie last season, I think AZ were the, the one that had the least minutes for anyone under age of 21, which for a club that has such pride in their academy is, is a bit of a shocker. Um, maybe the youth talents coming through aren't good enough, but to me, they've got some very talented young players in there. We saw it yesterday when they beat Tuzzle City that Ferry Dion came on and and scored with a header, and he's 19 now. You know, these are sort of players that used to be coming through AZ when they're 17, 18, getting first team chances. But do you think they're going to be a bit of this season? Ferry Dion did score in that game, he was given some minutes. He's impressed in pre season. Pascal Janssen's picked up on that. Michael Lachto, who's a Swedish winger, has come in, also played and scored against Tuzla City. Um, Kirk has played well. Do you think he's going to learn from that and play those younger players and give them a chance? I hope so, because they've got them, because they've got, you know, they've got a couple of young wingers, you know, Pocky we saw last season. Um, yeah. Van Van Boydero as well. He's a young, young winger that they've got on the, the bench. He's made a couple of, he played against Tuzla City in the first leg. They've got these Dutch youngsters and, and young talents coming through. They just need to play them. I think that's my biggest criticism of Pascal Janssen last year, that they had these young talents, but they didn't use them. You know, they tried to offer Tabuni a new contract this summer. Mm-hmm. But no wonder he left, because why is he going to sit on the bench for another year and get, get one appearance all season and play for Young AZ in the, in the, the Cook and Clampton division? And, you know, you've got, you've got Kip Miner's younger brother, Pierre. You've got, you've got Bergmeister, who, who's a good talent as well. You've got these players that they're itching for a chance to, to prove themselves, but Pascal Janssen needs to do it. If he's not going to get supported by, by the board with, with big signings and bringing in players, you know, for me, I thought he should have been all over Ty Stalinga this summer. Um, yeah. But he went, yeah. and you got players like Sam Lammers still, still out there who do a job for someone like AZ because Jens Odgaard's had one good season for RKC. And so far, I've not really been impressed with what he's been doing at, at AZ when he's been playing. Um, I didn't think he was that great against us set in either leg. Um, so if he doesn't live up to his potential, they might have just signed a dud. Um, and you know, you're relying on Pavlidis again to, to do everything. So I, I just hope that in the next month they they come to a sense of bringing, bringing two to three players, including a goalkeeper, including a winger. And yeah, this young Belgian defender they've signed from, from Inter Milan, you know, he came through a standard looking like a, a top class talent. He's already got one cap for, for Belgium, but he's apparently very injury prone. And that's why. Right. Why he's, he's come to his head because he's he's not been able to get back to full fitness and back to his full potential since getting injured. You know, this is a player that apparently Inter spent you know upwards of of fifteen million on. So I mean, he's he's obviously got the talent, but he's just been unlucky with injuries so far. So we'll see how how he can do in in a defence because you know Hasidi Akos is a player that is is a good defender but not not amazing. Um, and then you've got Bruno Martins in there. But I want to see more of, of Sam Bukima this season as well. I think he, he impressed me when he did get a chance last season. But again, he was another youngster that, that came in from, from Go Ahead Eagles and, and was used sparingly. So, yeah, I think that as it have potential, but whether it's unlocked by, by Pascal Janssen is still the, still the question mark. I still have, have doubts about him as a head coach. But yeah, we'll see if yeah. he can prove me wrong this, this year. Pascal Janssen could be on his way out if he doesn't go well for him this season. Um, I hope he succeeds. I hope it's a one in Europe, RZ. Let's move on to FC Utrecht. Um, our fifth team we're going to look at in this, this full-length podcast. We both put them as fourth on the table. We've already touched upon the transfers they've made. I can't even, can't even fit them all into the, the screen. They've made a number of transfers and a few we haven't even touched upon. I think people can look on screen if they really want to see every single player they've signed. But the highlights we've said are Bastost, um, Red Ons come in, uh, Verhaver, the defender who's played for Ajax and PSV. Um, what's to stop them from breaking the top three, Mike? I think that's a question we need to answer. Hank Fraser's the coach. Is, is it him? Or is it just that there isn't quite enough quality? I think <laughs> up front it should be okay. I think that... It depends on what, what Hank Fraser does because strangely in, in preseason so far, he seems to be pairing Bas Dost and Hank Verman together. Yeah, and, I find that too. Yeah, I don't understand why why you wouldn't pair Dost and maybe Raydan together, you know, a big man, little man partnership, but he seems to be going two big men at the top 
um, and Radan plays plays without them. So, but I mean, it's a strength because they've got Hank Veerman, who is a is an Eredivisie goal scorer, and he probably goes into the the season as third choice behind Bastos, who's also a proven Eredivisie goal scorer back in the back in the day, and Radan, who has so much potential that he's not fulfilled yet, and this could be the year for him to do that. I think up front they're sorted. It's behind that. Um, Quentin Timber's gone. Meyer's gone. They need to strengthen with the midfield with another signing. That's that's the vital thing that they need to do between now and the end of the the summer is bring in someone that can replace them. And I think they're pretty set because I think defensively they actually look pretty good with with Verhaver. He's got experience. They got Mike van der Hoorn in there. They got experienced defenders because not much pace, gone. Mind, but there's a lot of experience. A lot of experience, but you know, Willem Janssen's gone. Um, they got a couple of talented youngsters at defence, but I think one of them's one of them's really injured all the time. Um, St. Jago, uh, you just can't catch a break. Um, but they've got good fullbacks. You know, Vormerdam is 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 decent, and you know, I think Van still got Mark. I think it's going to be the first choice left back, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and he looks like a, a decent young talent. And then goal, they've got they've got some good options as well. So I think. Compared to the teams outside the top three, I think that you try to do have a lot of strength and depth. I think a player like Taylor Taylor Booth as well, I think he's somebody that's quite exciting for them and um, coming in from a for a free transfer. I think he could do do wonders for them. Um but I think they've strengthened well this summer. I think they've went out and they've signed quite a lot of players. Quite a decent uh, division player as well. I think you know Luke Browers was a, a standout for a couple like go ahead Eagles and going and getting him for such a small fee is, is a smart move. Um so we'll see how these players can can gel together as well. I think it's again it's it's using that word because there's so many clubs that have a new manager and have such a new squad as well. It depends on whether everything fits together. Um, because if Hank Fraser can, can finally prove his potential as a as a head coach, and because I don't think anyone can say he did well at Sparta last year, but he seems to have failed upwards and got you know, a great job. And um, so he can prove himself that he deserves that job and. You tracked. It's been too many years since they finished. I, I can tell you the last time that they finished fourth. So I think it's it's about time that they, they did that. I think they're they're big enough club to do it, and you know the fans need some European football. And I think this is the year that could finally get it. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, this 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 could be their chance. Um, by the way, before we go into our next team, if you are enjoying this, do give it a like. Obviously, it helps the algorithms on YouTube if you give it a like and and share it with other people. And subscribe to Football Down here if you're enjoying our Dutch football content. I'm scrolling down to FC Twente and I think I'm going the wrong way. So I'm <laughs> going to go a bit further up. There we are. Yeah, so Twente are the next team we should talk about. Um, let me just check in our predictions. I put them in sixth. You've put them in fifth. Um, the transfers, are, there's nothing surprising here. They've just basically kept the players they had last season. Michel Vlap, Sadilek, both signed permanently. Um, Sam Stein has come from Arda Den Haag. He could be a good sign-in. Um, and a couple of others around the edges. Um, they signed the Greek winger from Norwich on loan. And they didn't really lose anybody. So it, do you think this season is just going to be more of the same for Twente? And another top five, top six finish will be very good. Um, if they can get into the European group stages, that will be amazing as well. Ron Jans, as we both know, is a very good coach. Gets the best out of his players. Um, and he always has a smile on his face as well. It's very contagious. Um, yeah, it's more, more of the same from Twente. I don't think they're going to get any better, are they? Yeah, I think that they've, they've done smart business, if not amazing business, this summer. Um, I think they've went out and they've brought in the, the players on permanent transfers that were on loan. And they've added a couple of good talents. You know, Sam Stein, for me, is one that I would definitely keep an eye on this this season. He scored a lot of goals last season for Adder Den Haag. And so far in pre-season, he's been a standout for, for 20. So I'm excited to see what he can do um, if he's given a chance in the field to start ahead of, say, say Vlap. But I think to Zola, I think he's a good good signing. You know, Norwich signed him for a lot of money. He, he couldn't do it in the Premier League, but, you know, maybe in the Eredivisie, he, that could be his level and he could be, sure. be one of the signings of the season um, up front. You know, he's still got rookie Van Roosvinkel up front as well, banging in the goals at, at his age. So... Yeah, I think that all around 20 have a, a good squad, they have a good manager and they have a ferocious support. So I think that this season could be another one of, of challenging for, for top top four. Not top three, because I don't think they have that quality yet, 
but you know fourth place is is what they should be aiming for in a decent cup run and and European football back in in twenty because you know you need to look at the club it they've had some years of of great disappointment since the years that they were challenging for the title and, and they're playing Champions League football they've they've went right down there and they've come back up now and they're they're slowly getting back to to what they can be and I think that yeah it's another season of of challenging for fourth and European football again I think that the twenty fans would would bite your hand off for that and. You know they've made a couple of good signings, so yeah, it's it's, it's going to be another good season for them, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, another good agree. season for them. Um, let's move on to Vitesse Arnhem, who were one of those teams last season that we'd say would be you know amongst his European places. They had such a great run in the Conference League, but I I, I think we're both in agreement here. They're going to fall back a bit this season. They might yet dip into a transfer market again, but they've they've signed um a few uh sort of teen- teenagers on loan. They've got M- Mo Sanko, who's an 18-year-old striker for Stuttgart, but a Dutch talent. Will he get the games to impress and to improve his game? Um, the, the impressively named Ryan Flamingo is a centre-back who's arrived from Sassuolo on loan. Um, they've got another centre-back on loan for Benfica, Fedo. Um, Mela Mullenstein is a good signing, I think, from AKC of Olvik. He was a captain there. He'll be a good centre-back. Um, and Carlos Arcus will be the new right back, replacing um, replacing Eli Dasa, who's just left the club. So it's kind of replacing those senior regular starters, isn't it, with with young players. Thomas Lech is the coach. What a relief that is for Tess. He may have left this summer, but he will no doubt guide the players that are still there. I think they'll be fine in the top half come the end of the season, but they're going to drift away into that that pack in the middle of the table. And I don't think they're going to be in that top six, top seven, like they have been. I mean, let's just check the table predictions again. Uh, you went with them. It's ninth this season. I've gone with them as eighth. But they've lost a number of key players. ducky has gone. Um, Odos has gone. buzzer has gone. Das has gone. Um, Jobo has gone. Gerbic, another one. Uh, and the biggest one, biggest two, I suppose, Rasmussen and Appenda. So they've lost the goals. They've lost their... Five man strong defense. Max Bittek, probably the only player that survived from that, the left back. What do you think for them this season, Mike? Is there any hope for them? Do you think they can hit it off? Um, or is there actually danger they could get sucked into a relegation battle? I wouldn't have them being that bad. I don't think they're the relegation fodder just just yet. Um, I think that you know they've brought in the centre backs to replace you know, Bazaar. Dokin Rasmussen, you see them there, Mullenstein, Enzo and, and Flamengo. You know, Flamengo's a young Dutch talent. He's, he's not really made his first team debut yet in, in Italy for Sassuolo. So he, he, he's, he's a player that's apparently scored a lot of goals for Sassuolo's mm. under mm. Um or something like that. Um, so I think he can strike a ball well. I think he's a sort of set piece specialist. Um, He's, he's an exciting buy, but I mean, for me, the most exciting player that they've signed is is Sanko by by a long way. Um, you know, last season he was looking like he was going to be a regular for for Stuttgart before he suffered that really bad leg injury, and in, I think their the first game of the season, which rolled him out for for the rest of the campaign. So if he can get back fit, then he's an absolute beast up front. So I'd be I'd be excited to see what he can do um, in their division. I think that if he unlocks his potential, he could be could be excellent for them. But if he doesn't and he remains injury prone, then I think they've got real trouble up front. Who's going to score the goals for them? That would be a, a big worry without without a penda. So there's probably still work to be done before the, the transfer window ends. But it's, it's difficult for them, I think, because they've let so many players go, but they've not got any money for them. So players like Bazur... You know, Doki, these are players that should have brought in a few million yeah, for them yeah. that have left on freeze. So they've really shot themselves in the foot by not getting any money for these players. Um, so that's obviously meant that the, the purse strings this summer are, are very tight and, and no European football as well. So I think this is a season of trying to bring in a couple of youngsters, trying to rebuild and go again next summer. Um, so, yeah, I think that this is a season of, of mid-table I think the best they can hope for really is is to reach the the end of season playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. 
Um, on the other hand, there is a team that are coming up potentially into being in those European places uh, for several reasons we'll cover now. And that is Herd and Bain. We both predict them to finish seventh in our tables. They're not made many transfers this summer, but what they have done is good business. Not Pert's come in to be their new goalkeeper. He should be a safe pair of hands. Um, Mats Kola may add something uh, on the left-hand side of the pitch, whether that's the wing or wing back. Um, Anderson is a right winger. He's coming, he's coming from, from Bayern by Munich's second team. Hussein Ali is, is a right back. Could could be interesting business. Again, a young Swedish player. Um, I, I don't think they've, they've basically... I've just got the outgoings on screen and the players that have gone needed to go. Drezovic, Valdenberg, Backer, De Jong, a lot of a lot of the dead wood, I guess, around the club. Uh, and, and the biggest biggest plus for them is that Peyton Vandenen is now the head coach. He was great at go-ahead Eagles. I think he will be very good at Hell and Vane as well. Very good coach. Uh, and and they're back, they're back. It could be a back five this season with three centre backs. Really impressive. Joost van Aken, Sven van Beek, his new captain of this season, and um, Pavel Bokovic is back from his season-long injury. And he was an amazing defender. For me, one of the best defenders outside of the top three before he got injured. Um, and he will be like a new sign for them. So they could be defensively very tight this season if they play this back five, their centre-backs, a goalkeeper. And Amin Saar, who's now settled into the club, having had half a season up front, he could bang in the goals um, as a striker. And then all of a sudden, you've got a team that could be banging on the door of the top six, having been so mediocre last season. What are your thoughts on them, Mike? Why are you in agreement with me? Yeah, I was initially a bit, a bit down on here and being where I first looked at the, the transfers that they made. But if you look at the squad on, on paper, as you said, if you go back five, you've got Van Wonderen now, who does wonders as a defensive coach. And if you look at... The starting eleven, you know, Milan van van Uyck, I'm very surprised that he he's still yeah, at because yeah, yeah. he's a, an up and coming right back who should be following the route of you know Denzel Dumfries before him. He should be going up and up and up because he's now in Netherlands on the 21 right back. He's he's great, and if they can keep him this summer, then that's a huge bonus. And he's not on that list, but Sydney van Ooydon coming back as well from from Bologna on. Yeah. Um, I think if you're going to play 5-3-2 and you've got Van Hoydonk and, and Saar up front, you're a deadly partnership for the last half of the season last year. And I think they can do it again. And the player that they signed in, in January that did great for him as well, Tom Hay. So I think he's still still in the midfield. So he'll be making it tick there. They've got a strong defence behind him, a good attack and a good manager. So I think that this is a positive season for, for Hay and Van and coming. Yes, they've not made a, a ton of signings, but they didn't need to because they've got strength in there. Um, you know, they're still, as I keep saying, there's still a month to go at the transfer window, so that could change. But I think as as it is now, I still think they've got enough to to break into that that top half and challenge it for a, a European playoff spot, especially up front. Yeah, lots yeah, lots of good things for Head and Vane. Um, let's move on to a team which would also have a positive season in both of our opinions. And that's Fortuna Sittard who you had in eighth place, Mike, and I've got in ninth. So top half potential for them, having just just about survived the drop last season. Um, there were a lot of concerns with them defensively last season for Tuna, but a few very good signings. One I think a lot of people have heard about online, um, but it definitely wasn't Rodrigo Guth, who's a new centre-back that arrived from Atalanta. And they, they spent nearly a million euros on him. But he could be possibly, that possibly, you know, I think people who know where I'm going next going, what? You must be joking. But I think he could be their, their best signing this summer because he was so good at NEC 9 making and could be that centre-back that, that Fortuna really need to stem, the, to stem the, the tide and keep it tight at the back. It's something they didn't have. So, yeah, they've they've got him in um, in the midfield. They've got Dogen Erdogan. I, don't, I think I said his name completely wrong there. Turkish midfielder. Um Inigo Cordoba is a winger that impressed at Go Ahead Eagles last season. He's now arrived on a permanent transfer. And, of course, the one that surely everyone knows about is Burak Yilmaz coming in from Lille, 36 years old, but a Turkish forward who could score a number of goals for Fortuna this season. Add that to Matt Sernchins, who was already amazing for them last season. He's still at the club. Inigo Cordoba, who I just mentioned. 
And um, then, then you're wondering who Jan Fleming is. He went left for Millwall. And this could be a team at the top half of the table. They could even push higher. I would be surprised at this point if they're not in amongst that top half come the end of the season because of the talent they've got now. Um, and also, Sjur Zolte is the, is the head coach there. He had a good season, didn't he, before last season? So, like, Fortuna won a lot of games. And it was last season where they struggled defensively. Uh, obviously, we had COVID as well in amongst all of that. Um, but they, they finished strong enough to stay up. So, this could be Alte's kind of revival season with this new group of players, couldn't it? Yeah, I think that for a couple like Fortuna Sitar, this is about as exciting as it gets. Um, <laughs> coming into the season with, with Burak Yomas coming in. Um, I think they've got got big reasons to, to look at this season as one that you know they can fight for for top half and and dream even bigger than that. So you know with the the clubs around them being being quite average, I think that there's no reason why Fortuna can't push on, and they'll be expecting to do that this season with because clearly the owners have backed them by going and getting somebody like Yo Mas, going and getting. Going and getting good, you know, they're, they're, they're ambitious owners, they want to, to do well, and now is the, the season for them to, to push for that, that top half finish. And I can really see it happening. I think that you know, Burak Yilmaz, he's not played for them yet. I think there was some some injury, maybe concerns, some, some I don't know if there were some visa issues, I don't know about that, but now he's, he's cleared to play if he's fit enough and he's, he's starting out front for them, then he, he should guarantee goals in the Eredivisie. Because um, it's the type of player is, he can get them in the right positions. He's going to score goals. So, yeah, I think that with the clubs around them, I think you'll get Fortuna Sittard. There are a couple on the rise, and you know, let's get behind them. And, and I think that it could be the the story of the season in there, Divisi, the because they could really be be challenging that that top half. And who knows what could happen between now and the the end of the season if Yamas hits the ground running? Who knows? European football coming to to Sittard. <laughs> who knows and a nice little plug there to the Fortuna Sittard owner who was at one point um, a, a fun listener of our podcast he may still well do that um, if, you, if you are listening some great business this summer do keep it up great to see a team spending a bit of money as well um, in the Eredivisie Mike I'm going to let you choose where, where do you want to go next which team oh shall we let's have a look why don't we go to, to Kroningen Let's do that. One of the biggest teams in the Eredivisie and a team that struggled last season a lot um, under Danny Bouts. New coach this season, Frank Wormert. Um, and yet again, I'm scrolling the wrong way if <laughs> people are watching on screen. <laughs> Here we are, right, phoning in. I, I noticed a number of young players came in for them who we don't know quite how, how good they are. Um, but Joe Pelopesi came in from Turkey. He would play for a bit of Sheffield Wednesday and before that, Heracles Armelo, and he's now going to be the captain this season. I think he could be a great addition to midfield. Uh, the goalkeeper is going to be Michael Phillips uh, because the Leonberg, who was a goalkeeper last season, really wasn't good enough. So that's an improvement for them. All right, Mangoon's come in from Go Ahead. Uh, and, and then a couple of defenders from, from Ajax. So Masampas come in and Van Helderen, and I noticed that Heuningen fans slated Van Helderen massively in pre-season. They can't, they can't pass the ball, apparently. Um, it's a disaster waiting to happen, they, they were saying. A bit harsh, it's only pre-season. But a couple of signings there which did concern me first of all, but I, I think they have got enough, and Vermont is a good enough manager, that they will be absolutely fine. A bit of a mid-table. He could surprise them be a little higher up, but there's a reason why I got them in um, tenth place, and you have pitched them to be eleventh place this season, Mike. Yeah, I think they're, they're lacking quality. I think they've, the signings they've made this year, the the players have potential to to possibly to push them, but I think that there's a couple of youngsters in there that might not reach the the level required. Um, and yeah, I don't think they've got enough overall to really challenge for a European place at the moment. I think. Yeah, they're expecting Strand Larson to leave, and I think that that's probably still a possibility for the end of of the summer as well. I think there's clubs in Italy that would, would push for him um, for the. I agree. The that the latest is that he might actually stay because he's been named as like the third choice captain, and then that doesn't mean everything. But it also it does mean I think it means something, doesn't it? That he might well stay, which would be good firepower for them. Yeah, if he stays, then that's 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 great. Um, and him and Postema are, are two two decent strikers, but. I still don't. I think 
overall the squad, I don't think it's good enough, especially in, in defence. I'd, I'd worry about him. In midfield, I think Thomas Susov's a, a good young player. I think that seeing more of him and you know, there's there's Van Cam who is who's playing for for Netherlands under twenty ones recently and, and scored a couple of goals from. He looked a, a real talent. It wasn't getting game time. Um, if you know, if they're running enough youngsters like that coming through, they should really give them them more of a chance. And you know, because Suslov's performing well, I think you've got Strandar since he's young up front. You've got young defenders. You know, it's a it's a young squad who it really could go either way for them. Yes, Van Van Helderen, I think that he was like held as as a great young centre back when he was, you know, Netherlands under seventeen international. I think it's gone a bit hayward from. It's not been a good preseason. Mm-hmm. Remains to be seen whether he can he can make that step up. But for me, I, I just see it being another average season for for Honey, and I, I can't see them pushing Europe, and I can't see them getting relegated. I just think that the squad that they have is is guaranteed mid table mediocrity, really. Um, and I don't think they've really shown enough ambition in the transfer market to change that. Agreed. Whereas there is one team that was in danger of relegation last season and have strengthened, and that's Sparta Rotterdam. We both think that they could be mid-table this season. Maybe not higher than that. There is a possibility. Um, but I don't think they're going to be in, in big danger of relegation this season. Maurice Stein's still the head coach. They signed a couple of players from, from Norway. Uh, and they and they paid a, a good fee for them as well. Joshua Kisilano, he's a midfielder, and Tobias Lauritsen, who's a tall striker. They both come in. They've got Brim, who's come in from Eindhoven, a Canadian forward. And then uh, just a couple of little bits. So now he's come in permanently. And Jonathan de Guzman, the former Netherlands international, will definitely boost midfield options. And I, I keep I keep saying and and and, but there are a couple more signings that have come in, and I think Wolves. Make the team better. Omar Rakic, who's a centre back alone for Arsenal. Nikolai, who is a goalkeeper, is coming from Nat Breda. And you touched on him already, Mike, but he was like the best goalkeeper in the Dutch second tier last season. So he's got to be an improvement on um, Akoya, who was making lots of mistakes before he left for Watford. But yeah, the, the, there's some really good business for them. Um, and I think there's no danger of them getting relegated. I think they'll be mid table. I think they'll be absolutely fine. Yeah, I agree. I think that last season was it was a bit of a, a shocker for them. You know, there was off-field problems. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, resulted in Hank Fraser eventually leaving. They couldn't score goals up front. You know, they lost to Mega in, in January to, to Antwerp. You know, Ty wasn't scoring goals. Didn't really have, have enough about them up front to to steer them away. Eventually, they did avoid relegation by skin of their teeth. But I think this summer, they've added a lot of new players and a lot of good quality players. And I think Jonathan de Guzman adding some steel to the midfield will be will be great because that's what they need some leadership in there. And Nikolai, I think he was he's an outstanding goalkeeper last season for, for Nat Breda. And yeah, as I said earlier on, he was getting tipped for for his head, but he's gone to, to Sparta and he needs to prove now that he's there at the busy level. Because if he can then he'll get an even bigger move next summer. Um so you've got players need to that have the, the capability of, of pushing Sparta towards challenging for, for top half. And it's going to be interesting to see these players that come from, from Norway that have spent some money on because it's always a risk to spend money on, on players from, from Scandinavia. It works out sometimes, it, it doesn't work out some other times. But if you then two, two great signings, then, then Sparta might have just come into to two gems for, for not a lot of money. You can, you can possibly sell on for even more in, the, in a couple of years. So... I think Sparta needed this revamp. They needed a refresh, and and they've got that. And you know, there's still some young players there that that are coming through. You know, the Sparta Rotterdam Academy is one of the the best in the Netherlands, and you know, Sven Meijens is a, is an exciting player. We've still got goals up front. You know, Vito Van Croy um, is a decent attacker. He scored quite a lot of goals in preseason already. So we've still got players like like that. So I think that they shouldn't be going down this season. I think the the Sparta they should be looking up the table and. They've got a bit of ambition this season to, to maybe break into that top half. Yeah, I yeah. agree on all those points, Mike. We, we let, let's keep going. Let's keep the steamroller going, covering every single team. If you are enjoying this, do give it a like on whichever platform you're listening to it on. 
Um, I think we should talk about the new promoted teams next. And um, let's let's start with Emmen because Emmen were so strong in the Dutch second tier last season, uh, and they're, they're back in in the Eredivisie. For what it is, I believe they're only their third season in the Eredivisie. They had a couple like the first time ever when they first came up, um, and then they went down. But they are back. They've made a number of free transfers this summer, and I think that they're not they're not bad signings to add to what they had already. Um, Michael Halen is, is a centre back coming from Sparta. It's okay. Um, Eric Urschlegel could be the new first choice goalkeeper. He has some good games for Utrecht, so if he's given uh, games every single week, he could be good. Possibly one of their strongest signings, Michael Kieftenbelt, has arrived from Millwall. Uh, and, and he's he's come in and in his interview, he said he's, he's here to prove just how good he's gotten since he left the Netherlands for Millwall. He was once the Honingham captain, so he will get lots of games in midfield. Um, Gonzalo Sanchez, uh, I have no idea how good he is, but he's a striker that's coming from Peru. Um, Ricardo Zivkovic, who we do know a lot about, is a free transfer, but now 25 years old and once a super talent, now someone who's kind of like a journeyman going from club to club, still trying to get games and score goals. A couple of other signings there too. Um, I don't know too much about the striker that's arrived from France or Pacheco, who's a winger from Peru again. Hopefully some good scouting from them. I think we've, we've both gone for them to be midfield. What are, what are your thoughts on them, Mike? They've still got Dick Lukin as manager, haven't they? Yeah, they got they got a great manager in, in Dick Lukin, and yeah. they did so well last season to get get promoted by a by a canter. And the out of the, the teams that have come up, I think they've they look the the most equipped to to stay in their division. And you know, if the the players that they've signed in Keaton Belt and or should I go who have Eredivisie experience if they can can push them on um, then I think they will escape relegation you know you're signing a player like Zivkovic who he comes in on a free transfer you've got to think that that's there's not much risk to that and yeah there would be big questions about his attitude because um, he, he hasn't really hit the heights that everyone thought he would you know was a couple, only a couple of years ago he was playing in the Premier League because he got a, a loan to Sheffield United um, then he went back to China then I went to Red Star, played like nine games for Red Star, scored once, and now is is a free transfer at Emin. But in there, Divisi, he's still got pace. If and it's a big if because we've not really seen it consistently from him. But if he can play consistently to his ability, then Emin have a striker who can help keep them in the division with Sivkovic. Um So I think that these are good signings. You know, they've not really spent any money. It's all free transfers or loans, which is smart because you know they won't have. That much money to spend, and there's always a possibility of these clubs that can go straight back down. You don't want to ruin ruin their finances. So I think mm-hmm. they've got enough to, to keep them in. They've got the manager to do it, and I think that the clubs that are around them and they've come up, and another couple at the bottom are are weaker. So yeah, I think that Emin should be looking to finish comfortably outside the the bottom three. Whether it'll be comfortably, who knows? But yeah, I think that I think they will survive. Yeah, yeah. I think they will too. It'd be a big surprise to see them go down out of all three of the clubs that have come up. Let's talk about FC Volendam next, who uh, I, I, I don't know if it's the colour of the shirts, you know, wearing the, wearing the famous orange, um, whether it's the way they played last season. I don't know, but I just feel like I want to adopt them as one of my teams. Um, beloved Aston Villa fan here, I'm wearing a Talk United shirt as well. Um, <laughs> but but Volendam <laughs> might, might steal my heart this season if they can play well in their of well, let, let's see how they get on. The, the business this summer has been pretty much non-existent. Signing Benamar from, from Utrecht, 25-year-old centre-back. Um, and and yeah, no players have really come in or out. So they're kind of going with what they had last season. We've got Derry John Merkin, who might go to finals, but if he stays, he will co- return from his long-term injury finally. And he'll show what an amazing left-back he is. He's English slash Dutch. Um, but he, he was amazing with Dutch second tier a couple of years ago. Uh, and then they've got a number of other players as well, haven't they, Mike? Do, do enlighten us. But I've got them staying up in 14th and you've got them down in 17th. That's probably the biggest disagreement we've had so far. <laughs> but you think they're actually going to be in proper trouble. And I, and I think they might just have enough. They play some good football and the manager's Rim Young, who's been very good, very, very good for them. Yeah, I think that the positivity for them is that they've got a coach like Rim Young. He plays attack in football. I think that in the, the second tier for the past couple of years, they've been sort of kamikaze. They've been sort of the old Keegan 
way of playing when he was uh, in charge of Newcastle. You know, if they score four goals, we'll score five. Yeah. So our way of, yeah. way of playing, very open at the back, you know, going for it up front. You know, they've got a striker who was a missing piece last season in, in Robert Murin, who is guaranteed goals in the second tier. But when he comes up to the their division, it's not quite the same. So if he can yeah. finally make it in the top tier, then yeah, maybe they do have the goals to, to stay up. And they've still got Antonucci on loan from, from Feyenoord. And they've got a really good young, talented winger in, in Al Qadiri. Um, so they do have young talents and they've got a good manager who likes to play attack in football. Do they have enough to stay up? I'm very doubtful on that. You know, this is a team that's coming up to the their division for the first time in a long time. These, some of these players are very untested in the top fight. Some of them haven't performed in the top fight well enough in the past. So it remains to be seen if they can do it. You know, Vim Young, I think, is, a, is an up-and-coming coach. You know, I've tired him for jobs in the Eredivisie for years. The Eredivisie clubs have never moved from. This will be the, the year to see if, if they were right not to do that or whether Vim Young can prove that he is a, an Eredivisie coach who deserves possibly to move up and, and, and get a job pushing for... No, a, a team that can go for Europe because if he is going to come in and play very exciting attacking football, you know that's what we want to see, and that's the sort of coach you want in charge of clubs. Um, so yeah, it's it's an intriguing club. I love to see new clubs come up to Eredivisie for the first time in, in years. Yeah, and you know I'm excited to see how they do. I just it worries me they've only brought in one player, and I just I think that squad depth might be their downfall if they don't make another couple of signings. Yeah, and if there's yeah, any, any there's British any. Uh, people watching, they've got a few English players in their ranks. Josh Flint was starting to get some games towards the end of last season. So it, it could be one to watch from that perspective as well, um, from a, from an abroad perspective. Uh, yeah, let's move on to our, our third new promoted team this season. Another team that love to attack and don't really know how to defend. It's Excelsior. They're back. Uh, possibly the smallest club in the league, by the way. Um, just purely because of fan numbers. They have such a tiny stadium. They're dwarfed uh, by the size of Sparta, Rotterdam and Feyenoord, Rotterdam. They've let a number of players go. Matt Riffa has gone to final. That's pretty well documented. And Ty Stalinga, who a lot of people would have heard of last season, banging in the goals from the Dutch second tier. He's gone to lose. So nearly three million pounds, or euros near enough, has come into the club. And um, they've not spent any of it. They've got Yasin Ayub, who touched on him earlier, he was amazing at Utrecht, went to final, didn't go so well. He's gone abroad, didn't go so well. But he has arrived at the club. Um, Raider Karchuk, he was scoring lots of goals in the second tier a little while ago. He's had some injury problems. He's come in. Um, and Nathan Markello, I don't think you can call him a talent anymore. He's come in. So they, they could struggle big time without their main midfielder, without Ruben Niemeyer, who is also a good player for them, without their main striker. I'm just looking at the outgoings. A couple of those were also starters last season. They're going to really struggle. And there's a reason why we've both put them at the bottom of the table in our predictions. It's not as if they've got a massive fan base or something to help carry them in those tough moments. This could go pretty pretty ugly for them. Yeah, I think the Excelsior are a club that you look at and, you know, losing their top goal scorer, losing their second best player in, in Neymar, um, we for going to, to fire or they've literally been picked off of their best players. Now, as I can, it's not on the list there, but he has returned from, from fire or unknown. But he, he's not going to be enough. Um, I think that the players that have signed, Yasin Ayub, does he have it anymore to be performing at this level? Remains to be seen. I don't think Markello does. Cardiff didn't prove it. Spartan, you know, a couple of years ago, we were saying, oh, Cardiff should be, could be a great striker for, for Spartan. It never happened. Um, so they'd have big depths in them being able to score the goals for. For Excelsior, so I think over the the pitch, the, it's not looking strong enough. And um, I think they're a club as well that they went for the playoffs, but you know it's one of these ones that you know finished was it like fourth for fifth and then got through the playoffs. You know you saw NA same and I Megan, you know finished seventh eighth in the second division, but still make up and then impress in the busy. But I think that's because NAC went out and, and brought in some good head of the yeah. Yeah. Where we players that they stayed up quite quite easily and Excelsior haven't done that. So unless Excelsior go and sign three or four more in the next coming weeks, then they're really going to struggle. And I don't think there's anyone on loan they can get from Feyenoord that have really, really helped them out. Um, 
so yeah, it's it's gonna be a tough season for them. I can see them being on the end of a couple of scary results as well. You know, there's always one team that gets gets a seven or eight goal thrashing um, off one of the top sides, and I think this year it could be could be Excelsior. No, I fear for them massively as well. Already in the second tier, they were conceding far too many goals, and now they haven't got a good team in the area of Eze. So that that's why they 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 would probably be the bottom team. Um, that's the promoted teams, but there are still some teams left to go. And I know there are some big Eredivisie fanatics that are still watching, still listening. So thanks for, for doing that. Do drop us a like if you're enjoying this. Um, and subscribe to Football Danya if you are new to Dutch football and you didn't know that we did this. And you're still listening because you're so fascinated by Dutch Eredivisie. Now, um, I think I think the team that could be in trouble with Excelsior is RKC Volvig. Going back to table predictions, I've got them in 17th. You've got them in 16th. I'll pull up their summer transfers on the screen. If you haven't seen it, by the way, there's a, an exclusive interview on Football Dania at the moment with Joel Pereira, the goalkeeper. Um, spoke to him about a few things. And he was going to be the main goalkeeper last season before his long-term injury. And he was battling out with Etienne Varsen to be the number one goalkeeper. So that could be an interesting um, sort of battle going on there with who's going to be the first choice goalkeeper. But it would be in front of the goalkeeper that will be the problem. They sold Merlinstein and Armand Tuba, their two main centre backs last season, and picked in, picked up some decent fees for them too, but haven't reinvested that money. Um, the biggest transfers that have come in though are Patrick Vluch, who's come in from Vitesse, a midfielder who has a point to prove, but looks a decent player, um, and and the striker that's arrived from Arsenal. He looks like he has a Dutch name, but he's not Dutch; he's Danish. It's Mika Beardet, and. Uh, He's scored a few goals in pre-season. A striker that, that could score enough goals to lessen the blood of Odegaard leaving. Worked quite well with Michael Kramer. And they might be all right again. Joseph Osting is a good coach, isn't he? But I don't think they have enough this time to stay up. They prized themselves on their defence last season and it's got a lot weaker. Yeah, I think there's big doubts about them defensively now. Um, I think Vernon and Anita Staines is a good move for them. And then... Yeah. One that's not been announced yet, but Florian Josephson's coming back and um, saying for him. So they've got got him on the wing, um, but wherever they have enough in defence to, to start themselves going going down, uh, I don't think so. I don't think they've strengthened that enough. And, and players like Pratik Vau, you know, he's he, on the peripheral of the test, came on for a few substitute appearances, didn't really do much. Um, I don't look at their summer signings and go, oh, they've strengthened. Um, it doesn't look like that to me. So I think they're one of the clubs that, that is in big trouble um, if they they go on a run of, of losing games. You know, even players like Alexander Butner are losing players like that. Bit of experience yeah. um, is not a good thing. So, yeah, I think that you're looking at RKC and you're looking at if the clubs are going to go down, then they, they're one of the main candidates to do it. Um, and a shame to lose them too. They've they've been a, a good team battling away. They were, they finished tenth last season, despite being relegation trouble. But yeah, could could be their their time to go down. The bottom two, of course, getting relegated in the Eredivisie. And um, if I'm not mistaken, we've got three teams left to talk about, and they are the teams that got promoted last season. Uh, sorry, the season before. Should I say now? Um, let's start with go ahead Eagles. We both predicted them to finish fifteenth. I'll get their transfers on the screen now. And I don't think there's anyone that you, you think they've gone, oh, wow, like that's, that's a good sign him. Apart from maybe Bobby Edekanya, who could still live up to the promise he had as a youngster. He's a winger that's come in. Uh, again, they were at this sort of end of a table where a lot of free transfers have happened. Um, loan transfers as well. Jose Fontan could be that new centre-back that they really need. They, they, they could hit it off. I'll let the people that are interested have a look at those transfers there that they've made. That one or two of those could prove to be very good signings. Jamal Amofa is a centre-back from Arden Haag. I know he was very good in the second tier. Um, why why do you think we both think they'll they'll they'll, they'll finish 15th, Mike? That would be just, just safe, wouldn't it, of 16th, which is a relegation playoff place. What is it about them this yeah. season that you think will help them fall back? I think Case and Bundon leaving isn't isn't a good start, is it? No, they have lost a great coach. Yeah, I think there's a couple of intriguing old transfers in there. I think you know Eric Lansana, a uh, talented midfielder from Ajax, he could do okay. Ben Stokers, he's a uh, he's an Eredivisie striker. He's he's 
been around the bottom of the table for a few years. He scores you know, four or five goals a season. You know, he's he's a decent enough sign in. Rashan Fernandez, he's a is he a Luxembourg international um, winger? He's been at Telstar for a few years. I think he could be be an okay signing for a bottom half of the busy club. So I think they do have enough in certain areas just to to see them outside the bottom three. But they're definitely one of the ones that could be dragged in. Um, I don't think there's any doubts about that. You know, the squad's not, not that good um, to, to maybe push for a top half. And yeah, Keith Van Vonderen was the was their um, main strength, I think, last season. He was a great coach for them and he, he got them he got them staying up pretty pretty easily. So I think losing him is is big, but I still just think they might have enough and a, a couple of good youngsters brought in to, to see them just outside the relegation zone. But if they went down and if they finished bottom two, I wouldn't be surprised. No, I wouldn't be surprised either. They could be bottom and humiliated with Excelsior at the moment. Because I, I think Van Wonderland really pulled them up last season. And, and the if the transfers don't go well, it could really just catapult into, into a terrible season. Let's talk about Cumber next. Cumber Leovarden, who were that team up at, say, was it fifth or sixth round Christmas last season? They, they were amazing. And then they just dropped like a stone for the table in the second half of the season. Partly due, due to their coach, Hank de Jong having some poor health. Um, there's still a mm. bit of 50-50, whether he will be the main coach throughout this season as well. It's a big shame for, for them. Dennis Ha is the interim coach. In his absence, he's helped bring in Sylvester van der Vata, who Sylvester van der Vata. He was a winger who was impressing with Heracles Almelo a couple of years ago. If you if any University fanatics here remember him. And he's coming from Orlando, from, from the US, for a good fee. Combo are nearly splashing out a million euros there for, for someone who, who could could be a very signing, but also slip back into some poor form that we have seen from him as well in, in the in the US. Um they signed just recently centre back Bursma. Uh and then it's players like Virginia coming in from Everton, the new goalkeeper for them, a loan signing who could could be a good one. But it's a similar story to go ahead Eagles. If they, if these signings don't don't work out. And this form from last season continues, they could be relegated. But what's more likely is that they're just bottom half. They'll they'll win enough games to stay up. Um, because they, they did have some good quality players last season. Yeah, I think you're you're definitely right there. I think that they have enough to be to be comfortable on the table or they have not enough to be to be bottom free. Is they're one of these clubs that could like quite a lot of teams in there because there's very average teams that they could be dragged into it. I think Van der Vaughan is a, a good sign and if he can replicate the form that he showed at, at Heracles. I'm surprised that he's come back to the Netherlands because he was so keen to leave. Exactly, um, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. He threw his toys out of Prama a few times to to leave for Orlando and then it clearly just hasn't gone to, to plan. Um, maybe he got a bit tired of the theme parks, you never know. But yeah, it's coming back, playing for a club like Canberra, you know, it could go either way. His attitude might not be in it or he might be very keen to prove himself. So if he's keen to prove himself and he does well, I think it's an excellent signing for him. If it goes the other way, then he could be a contributing factor to them getting relegated because they spent probably most or nearly all of their transfer budget on on him. So, yeah, it's... I have them outside the bottom three, but, you know, it's it's like the other clubs. If, if they got dragged into it, you know, I would really not be surprised because their summer business just isn't isn't good enough to say that they've, they've strengthened. Yeah, that's yeah, why I went with Cumber in 16th. You've gone a little high at the table. But I think that will, they will be the surprise strugglers because of that form that they, they had, which was just so bad like last season. They were good in some of the home games. The home form could be important, keeping them up. But for me, I think they'll struggle. Um, that means there's one team left. And that is NEC Nijmegen. We both really enjoyed watching them last season. They were absolutely fine in mid-table. But because of the nature of the bottom half of the league, it wasn't far for, until the relegation playoffs, was it, for so many of those teams? We could see something again this season where it gets really congested with a lot of mediocre teams. I think NEC will have to take a little step back this season. Roger Meyer is an OK coach. Um, the signings helped him a lot last season, but he's lost Edgar Barreto, he's retired. Um, and and Lassa Schoen is a year older. So that, that, that was... 
a, a massive part for them last season. G- Guth as well, the centre back, he's left to go to Fortuna Sittard to strengthen them. But anyway, their business. The main highlight for them is that Sama Tanana has come in, attacking midfielder who we all remember from the test last season. Who, who like, like, like you just said, Mike, throwing his toys at a pram. Tanana was another one. He threw his toys at a pram to leave the test. Went to Turkey, didn't work out. Oh, look, he's back in the Netherlands again. So he has, again, a point to prove. I'll leave the transfers on, on screen for those that are interested. Um, they lost a few other starters as well from last season. Jonathan Keita's gone to Zurich in Switzerland. Will they be all right? Or do, you, do you think that maybe we agree that, again, this could be a team that might be relegated? Yeah, Um I was quite happy with my prediction yesterday that NEC would be very comfortable, safe, and that's how it turned out to be. But, you know, I'm, I'm a lot less sure about them now because they have lost some very good players. You know, Akita was was crucial to them last season. I think that the striker that they, they brought in um, on loan last season, Ali Ackman, who scored a couple of goals at the start of the season to help them stay up. He's he's now gone. So, you know, who's going to score the, the goals up front for them is a big, big question mark. For me, and it's now Tanan, it's, it's a sort of player that he left for Tessa because he got benched for being overweight and not putting in enough work. So has he come back with a different mindset? Is is he firing on all cylinders? Because if he is, then he's an excellent player and he was he's the Tessa star for, for a while. But if he's not, then if you sign somebody that's not in best of shape and, and that could, could worry them. But you've got to hope that, you know, they've got a leader like Lassa Schoener who... It should be the, the biggest influence on them and it should be getting the, the team sort of bind into his his will really and yeah if he can can muster up there. So I still think they've got some good young players. They've got Sissoko, a young winger who made a, a handful of appearances last season but scored one of the goals and I think that he'll get more of a chance chance this year. And there's a, still a few good young defenders there. Um so I, I think that they've got enough to be comfortable in the table again. But as you've said, and as I've said for another number of clubs, if it was to go all wrong and if it was to get dragged into the bottom three, I would not be surprised because, again, still amongst the goal, as I've said, for a number of clubs, as of yet, they've not strengthened enough to say that they'd be safe. But NACR, maybe two signings, a new striker away from being, being comfortable in the table for me. Um, so we'll see in the next month if they can can bring that in. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Now, it's uh, been a strictly long podcast, Mike. But I think we'll extend it a few extra minutes. Let's just do a few of the random bits, which I'm sure people will enjoy listening to. Who do you think will be the top goal scorer in the league this season? I actually think it's quite tough this year because I think yeah. there is a number of intriguing strikers around the league. Um, I think for a few years we've had, a few years have been like, oh, there's no good strikers in the league. But now I think there's quite a few. You know, I think that players like Ricky Van Vilfinkel, who, who got close to being top goal scorer last year, um, could challenge again. You know, you got Luke De Jong, who would, for me, be the favourite going into it. So I think I'm going to go with Luke De Jong. But then, um, can you really pass somebody like Tadic, maybe? Or who knows, Jimenez might come in and be the, the valve course of of Feyenoord and score tons of goals with his head and well we well, like his wouldn't score his head, I mean with his feet. But um yeah, so at the moment I would say that if I was to put money on it and I would want to go with a favourite, I'd I'd say Luke De Jong's probably the the nailed on number one to be that top goal scorer. But I think there's a number of intriguing intriguing strikers like Sara, Heron Vane. Um so yeah, I think it's gonna be a tight race for the golden boot, but I think Luke De Jong will be the main man for PSV, I think he'll play most of their games. And I think he'll be the one that scores upwards of, of 15 to 20 goals. I think Luke Young is also the favourite to get that golden boot. Amin Saar, if he lives up to this potential that he, he does have, um, Hill and Vane are going to move a big profit for him the following summer. He could score 20 goals probably this in the league this season. I have been wrong with these predictions before, though, I must say, for top goal scorer, but he would be one of my uh, sort of surprise picks for that. Um, and a lot of people were thinking, well, why haven't you said Yilmaz yet? I think he's just too old, isn't he? I don't, I don't think he's going to be fit to play all yeah. the time. But, yeah, he's got quality and he'll score goals. Well, we've seen with Arjen Robin in the past, it doesn't always work out the quite the way people think it will. 
let's see. Mm. Um, how about teams to get go furthest in Europe this season and team to get knocked out earliest? Just for context, Ajax in the Champions League group stages. PSV could make it there or be in the Europa League group stages. Final the Europa League group stage. And RZ and Twente at the time of recording are both in Europa Conference League qualifying. Um, who do you think is going to go furthest? Oh, it's, it's tough because, you know, when you go say furthest, it could be, could be PSV, but it could be because they get knocked out of the Champions League, Europa yeah. League, and then they end up in the Conference League final. Um, but yeah, I think, I think PSV, for me, would be the one that would go furthest in Europe. Um, I think. It might not be the Champions League. I think they'll be dropped into the Europa League, but I can see them possibly going quite far in that that competition. Um, but I wouldn't rule out Feyenoord and yeah, Feyenoord going quite quite far as well. But I don't know if Ajax are, have got enough quality to go far in the Champions League this year, and I don't know if AZ have enough quality to go far in the Conference League. In twenty, I think they'd be happy to be in Europe. So if they go on a run like the test did last year, then it would be absolutely out of the moon. So for me, the, the biggest chance of success would be like a PSV in, in the Europa League. Yeah, if Feyenoord gel well together, they could be good fun in the Europa League. But they could get knocked out into the Conference League and, and go on a run again. Um, it depends on the team, team situation, doesn't it, at the time. Like if they're out of the title race and they're having a good moment and then they start doing well in Europe, that becomes a focus then, doesn't it? And for Ajax, mm. the thing's always been that if they get knocked out of Champions League, suddenly it's all over. It's all dramatic and the Europa League is not good enough for them. And because of that, they won't, they won't quite pull out their finger enough in the Europa League. That's a competition they, they could actually go and win and would be yeah. very good for a, a, um, a team as good as Ajax. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the gone are the days of those embarrassing Dutch clubs in Europe, don't you think? Oh, 100%. I think the, the days of getting knocked out by teams from Luxembourg and yeah, in the qualifiers are, are gone. So, you, you know, AZ, you know, I expect, I fully expect them to beat Dundee United. Um, I expect Twente to get through for their qualifier as well. So I think that, that the days of that are gone, but, you know, whether PSV can, can go up against an AS Monaco and knock them out for two legs. Yes, I think it's an even tie. I think it, it's 50-50 at the moment. But it's a tough one. Um, and then it's even tougher to come after that as well. So I don't think it's an embarrassment now. But I think that, as we said last season, or a lot got said to us, the coefficient is good. But a conference league has helped Dutch clubs a lot. Because yeah. Dutch clubs in the conference league are stronger than a lot of teams that they're facing there. So that competition is absolutely perfect for them. But what I'd love to see is a, a, a Dutch club go far in either the Champions League or the Europa League, because that's the main two competitions. It's great for Feyenoord to get to the final of the, the Conference League, but you know, you need to push up the, the competitions to, to push for the Europa League and push for for the, the Champions League. Because if you know, no disrespect, but you know, I am Scottish, but to see like Rangers get to Europa League final um on a team like Frankfurt, there's no reason why that can't be Ajax, PSV and Feyenoord. Um so I, I would really hope the Dutch clubs can really focus and and push on in those competitions this season. I think we've covered a lot of the players to look out for, and possibly some flops as well. Um, young players, I think there'll be more coming on football down you soon about that. But again, we talked a lot about them. So maybe the final thing, let's say, who's going to be the, the best head coach this season? Ooh. Tricky one, isn't it? Yeah, it is a tricky one because... Depends what, yeah, it depends what the, the factor is that would be number one head coach because you could say Duke, Dick Lukeen for keeping them in, up and getting them close to the, the top half would be would be great for him. Um, Arna Slot getting Feyenoord to top two would be great. But who knows, if, if PSV win the league, then we could be talking about Van Nistelrooy as being the, the coach of the year. So... I think the the one I'd be one coach that I'm keeping my eye closest on is Van Estoy this season. So he's the one that I've got my attention on to see how good he is. But I think the the best coach in there at Vizzy right now, I'd say, would be a be on a slot. Yeah, he is the best coach at the moment, isn't he? Slot. Um and 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 if he does something amazing with them, 
he could be off to a bigger club after that. Um, Van Vundelen's got my attention at Head and Vane. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some good coaches out of the league. I don't think there's many teams with awful coaches at the moment. So it's that's open to debate, that one. Um, I haven't encouraged people enough to go into the comments. And if you made it this far on the podcast, <clears throat> do the job a comment below in response to anything we've talked about in this pre this this full full preview of the area 2022 23 season give us a like if you haven't already like i said comment below who do you think is going to win the league who could be in trouble this season getting relegated and who are those players and coaches to watch out for do let us know um if you can't let us know on on say youtube do let us know on twitter so yeah please like subscribe and plenty more to come from us at football down throughout the season hope you enjoy watching